I'll start off for uh, getting ready for this week uh, uh, with some good news is starting a three-week return from the IR window uh, will be David Montgomery. So I think that's great. It's exciting for us. Uh, we'll see where it goes and, and everything. So, But to, to start that, it'll happen today. Um, still on IR with no change will be Dion Bush and Tevin Jenkins. Uh, and then Jermaine Effetti, uh, there's no change. He's still on the, uh, on the COVID list. For us, we just had our walkthrough. Uh, it was... You know, it was great to be able to, to get outside and, you know, to get back out there with them. And for me, I, I, was, uh, I was cleared on Tuesday. So I was back in the office Tuesday morning. I was able to get back in here and, and get back to some quote-unquote normalcy. It was awesome seeing, um, you know, all the, all the coaches and really just kind of getting back on track. So uh, we want to continue to be very diligent with all the, the um, you know, the, the, the the COVID and making sure that everyone's wearing their masks and making sure that, you know, we're smart uh, is real. And, and so we got to stay on top of that. But at the same point in time, the focus is, is going on 1-0 one, one against Pittsburgh on, on Monday night. That's huge. And so that's, that's how we've attacked it. We had a, a good, uh, good meeting this morning, and, and now here we are, you know. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and open it up to you all. Matt, no one. David's wiring the way you do. How would you describe kind of where he's at at, at this stage in terms of his eagerness? And <clears throat> yeah, his um, David is, as you guys know, he's he's very focused. So when he comes, you know, he's he's back out there and he's 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 at the walkthrough, and you see like he's just he's focused, play by play, and just where he's at. But uh, you know, I think for us physically to see where he's at and, and get him out there and get a feel for for this week, um, I know he's worked really hard to get to this point. It does. Uh, it probably feels like forever to him, and I know it feels that way for us too. He was having such a great year, and so now we'll see where it goes. Um, but it's a great, it's a, it's good timing if we are able to get him back and get him going, because also too he's a he's a he's he's grown into such a tremendous leader for that offense, and I think that part is sometimes when you're you're not around as much the guys that can that can. Um, you know, you miss that, and and now to be able to get him back in those huddles and that stuff is great. Man, having a buy after this, yeah. that, how does that factor into your decision whether to bring him back now or? To... Probably every guy's a little bit different. If you know, he's so eager to try to get back. We'll keep an eye on on where he is. We'll we'll see how he looks. Um, that'll be key to see how he looks. He'll he's got to tell us how he feels, and then we'll just get a feel for um, if it's the best thing for us and him. And if it is. If he's able to go and we feel good about it, you know, he's going to be up and re ready to rock and roll. So that, that's probably the biggest thing. Is Khalil Mack practicing or do you think of anything? It's, it, he's the, the same, in the same situation. Um, we all know, uh, and we know as coaches, you all know from, from dealing with him every week where he's at, he's going to want to try to do everything he can to, to get right and go out there. But there's no change with, with his status from really last week. We're just going to continue to keep working with him. Yeah. I know that you, you hated being out. Yeah. Um, was there any good part about it at all for you? Was there any kind of reset for you? or did it, I don't know if that slows things down for you or gives you a different perspective on things to have that week. It did. It did, Jason. It, it, it allowed me, you know, um, you never want that to happen. And you, you get frustrated. You, you, you know, you say, man, it's, you, you really can't make it up to the fact that you can't be, you're a head coach of, an, of a team and you can't be there with your team. That's hard. How do you deal with that. And I think the initial reaction for me was, okay, how am I going to handle this? But then when you get to that time to be able to sit back and say, okay, where am I? Where's we, I talk about it with the staff and the players. Where's the 30,000 foot view right now? I get to step away from being inside in the trees, step up and see, okay, how's this going? Where, where are things? And, and how do I as a leader be able to see where we're at? And heading into that week before playing the game, uh, you know, you got to handle the weekly stuff. But then at night, you get some time to be able to think, you know, think where you're at, and where you're at as a as a head coach, where you're at as a person, where you're at as a leader, all that stuff. And I I, um, I really believe that it's going to help me, uh, and I used it as best as I could to to reflect on a lot of stuff, you know. And the the biggest thing is is understanding that I can't and we can't control before we can't control what's going on and what's going to happen future, win or losing games, stuff like that, injuries, et cetera. It's just we have to worry about today. And, and I believe that. And I don't just say that. That's, that's, that's real. And so you got to stay in the moment. And, um, you know, even me personally, you know, just with you, you get to be able to make sure that everything's good. 
on the personal side and just you really get to shoot your – you're not at the office. So you got to be able to use your time and reflect, and that's what I, th I think I did. You've been able to kind of establish this running game with David and then now with Khalil. Do you have a sense of how that will work with – David, once he's able to return, how you kind of balance the, the carries there in the backfield and also obviously with Justin involved as a runner as well. You know, we'll, we'll work through all that if that gets to that point. But, I mean, you know, David's worked extremely hard to, to be the running back on this football team and be the guy. And, and you know, he, he gets hurt and that's frustrating and all that. But um, it's definitely a – I wouldn't call it a problem, but it's something good for us to be able to – I mean, you see, shoot, we got down in the game the other day and uh, we lost a couple of running backs. And before you know it, you're saying, well, we're one more, you know, you know, shoestring away from breaking that, that we got to have somebody else go in, and, and that's a that's an emergency situation. So it's good to be able to get those two guys together. Khalil has shown what he's able to do. We feel really good about that. So I think, if anything, um, it allows us to feel really strong at that position and, and be able to use them both. But Montgomery doesn't lose carries because Khalil. No, no, no. D David is uh, is a you know again. You guys all know how we feel about him and what he's done, and he's a tremendous leader in this offense. What did you maybe learn about them that you didn't know, or what do you assess about exactly where this group is right now? Yeah, number one, uh, Dion, they were they're resilient throughout the week. They never they never let that affect them. They were great uh, throughout the week. Was great. Um, what you see just from from going through that the game and, and the way that that went is, um, and really for me to get back with them um, for the first time really yesterday with the players, uh, you understand the temperature where they're at. They they were. They were you know, pissed at the way that we played and, and ended up losing that game yesterday. Because you go through everything. You go through all the what happened, why did it happen, uh, where are we at. But then you got a reset. Today they come in and it's all Pittsburgh. And now the energy and the vibe is great. You know, they're out there and they care. And, you know, we were talking to one of the guys just a little bit ago and they're like, Coach, you know, we're, we, you know, we got a good group of guys. We're resilient. We care. And when you have that and you hear that from a player, you know what it means. And then it's the – it's everybody creating that leadership. Leaders create leaders and, and rolling now. And now we get an opportunity against a great football team um, Monday night, and we gotta, we gotta, we got to go do, you know, do as best as we can to try to win the game. How did you address uh, the penalties that kind of stacked up, on the, especially on the interior of the offensive line on Sunday because they stalled some uh, promising opportunities? Yeah, there's a, there was a few there, um, Adam, where it, it, I thought it was a, a great play call by Bill on the screen. We had to push in the back by Cody. We had to downfield two penalties in one play. Some of that's timing. So when you're when you're running a screen, you got to make sure the timing of where you're at. We call them, we have counts with the screens. Is it a one count, two count, three count? Um, so we got to be good there. Um, but there was they were drive stallers, and we kind of overcame some of those. But at the at the same point in time, we got to eliminate those. And and you guys know, I mean, we we want to try to be. We need to be a lot better offensively and score more points, and that's not a way to do it. So that that and the negative runs, we have more negative runs in that game than we usually have. Different reasons, but uh, we got to eliminate that. The good thing offensively was I thought I mean so much fun seeing it on third down, the execution on third down and decision making, the timing, etc. Uh, but we got to we can't be first and goal at the five and lose four yards on a run. You can't have that. You got to score touchdowns. To that point has Justin shown a knack for? Like having something within him to overcome negative plays. I think he does. I think he does. And and uh, because of how he's wired, uh, he he doesn't. You know that fourth and one, that great run. That's a special play. We'll always remember it. He he had fun in the moment. We all had fun in the moment when he scored that touchdown. But then he can reset and come back and be ready for the next play. It's the same thing as when it's a bad play. If something doesn't happen the right way, he doesn't let him let let it affect him. And if you have that, you know, you want that, especially in the quarterback position. He has it. On the fourth and one run, what created the confusion coming out of the huddle and getting lined up properly? No, there's just uh, – we had a, a specific alignment that – sometimes that happens when you're coming out, whether, you know, if it's a position change or et cetera. But that one there was just – he just came out wrong, got to the other side, hit the motion, and uh, it didn't affect the play. They called a good defense, and um, we just had better offense there. Or better, I should say better player there on that one. A, a lengthy sort of look into why Allen's production mm -hmm. hasn't been where it's been. Where are you at in terms of your, I guess, concern with the volume of opportunity he's had, and how can it be changed? Yeah, we're we're um, you know when you got a guy like Allen uh, on your team, and especially what he's done in this offense the last several years, you you um, 
you, you come to definitely appreciate that. And you know that other teams are aware of who he is and where he's at. And sometimes they're going to try to take him out of the game. Um, you know, for, for us, trust me, there's plenty of stuff that we're, that we're trying to get to uh, in certain areas of this, this, this game, whether it's first down, second down, third down, or red zone. Uh, and for whatever reason, it hasn't happened as much. And there's been some timing, some things here or there. But it's nothing. I mean, A-Rob's practicing hard. He's doing every. I mean, he's. I think it's one of those deals where just once him and Justin continue to keep working through specific routes and concepts, it'll get better. And, uh, you know, we'll just, we'll just see where it goes. But A-Rob's been awesome. Hey, Matt, when you were out, were you sick? How were you like physically? How was I physically? Yeah, I was pretty good. I mean, I, yeah, I, 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 uh, I felt pretty good. You know, it's, it's, uh, I'm glad I'm, I'm here today and uh, being able to, to just get back is awesome. You know, but I felt good. Now that it's in the rear view, can we ask you what your setup was like watching the game, what TV, all that sort of good stuff? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the setup was, for me, um, I mean, pretty simple. I mean, it was, uh, it was you know, being at – a hotel and being able to, uh, uh, you know, watch the game and just, it's weird. It's different. You know, you, you're, you're a lot of sitting on a couch and then able to, uh, uh, you know, just zoom all the time. And that's, that's, you know, I, I got zoom and it's good. It saved me, but I'm kind of done with it, you know? So watching, watching the game was hard, you know, it just, you don't like it. You, you, you know, I, like I said to you before, you just sit there and you watch it and you're, you're trying to figure out what the play call is and understand, okay, oh, yeah, it was this play call, good play call, or it was that. And it's just different. I don't think it's hard. How long did you go without being in the same room with another person? And, and you're a fairly personable guy. Is that, was that hard to just be yeah. alone in a hotel? Yeah, I mean, it's just FaceTime and Zooms. That's, that's it, you know. So it's, uh, it, that's what it was. Uh, no, no, I, I didn't eat and I didn't drink okay. nothing. I just sat there and was just like, I was, I was nervous the whole time. You know, I didn't think I was going to be nervous, but I was more nervous than, than normal. Um, but I, you know, it's just, that's just how it was. I had no idea how I was going to go. I was, I was writing down play by play what happened. You know, you, you, you remember a lot more stuff when you write it all down and you're able to look at it in between timeouts and stuff, but it was different, really, really weird. Usually when you have such run production like you guys have had recently, at least the production in the passing game, that obviously has not been the case. Last week, Allen Robinson mentioned the fact that you know, often bring in an extra tackle to aid in the run game, which takes somebody out of the route if you do decide to pass there. How do you kind of balance you know, that decision of bringing in that tackle, which has been productive for your running game, but does take someone out of the route if you do decide to pass on that? Yeah, there's – when you do that, you have to be – you, you got to stay away from tendencies, so you can't always be run. Uh, you got to be able to pass uh, and, and have that. And, and, and then who is it that you're working with as that extra O-lineman? A lot of teams do it. Some teams don't do it at all. Um, you know, we also ran into a little issue a few weeks ago with the tight end situation. We were short on with, with different reasons for the tight end. So that helped us. So I think Alex has done a great job there. And, um, but it, it's a, if you use it the right way, it can help you. Uh, and it, 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 again, makes the – the guy up in the press box have to decide, okay, what are they getting to personnel-wise? So it's just another personnel, too. So there's a balance. You can't have tendencies with it. Matt, uh, it's not every week you're going against one of the greatest coaches in NFL yeah. history. I know that uh, you don't have any overlap with him career-wise, but is there anything specific that you have admired over the years from Mike Tomlin? 100%. I think that the way that he leads his organization is rare. And, um, you know, I, you know, I've been to different owners' meetings over the years, and, and been, you know, been around him, and, and you know, he went to William and Mary, and I went to Delaware, and so, but I was, I was younger, um, but the path that he came through and the way he's done things, I, I just, I just really respect and love the way that he treats. Um, he's real with his, with his coaches. He's real with his players. He's, he's authentic. He's tough on them, but loves them, uh, and he wins. That's what he does. He wins. So I just have a ton of respect for him, and, and you just said it. I mean, one of the greatest coaches to, to ever coach in this league, and um, it just speaks volumes. I have a ton of, ton of respect, you know. Did you ever get a chance at one of those owners' meetings to talk with him for 10, yeah. 15 minutes? Yeah, or? we'll talk now and then, just a little bit. Nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing real personable, but um, I think more than anything, it's just a respect factor that I, that I have, and uh, just 
I, I, I really like the way he – I like his style. Every head coach has a st certain style. I really appreciate it, and I think his style is really good. I like his, the way he coaches. Matt, if you're half, you know, about halfway point, there, there are games to be played, but obviously having lost three straight mm -hmm. with, with what your record's at, yeah. probably feeling like it's time to get going if, if you're ever going to – For sure. Push. No doubt. Um, what, how, would, how would you describe the urgency and the attitude – inside this building as you move forward. Here. Yeah, we're, we're um, there's there's definite urgency, and I think that that's 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 okay. You need to have that. Um, we always talk about the you know the fork in the road and going left or going going right, and we've been in other times throughout this the, the years where we've had that decision to make, and we've been pressed up against it, and you got to go. And so we got we have this game coming up, and then you got to buy, and then you got eight games left after that. Um, but the only thing that matters is making sure that we get that win. The the wins change everything. Um, it definitely deodorizes things that, that you don't do well, but it's okay to do that because you're winning. And, and so you look at the Steelers, for example, right? They started out one and three. Here they are four and three. They won three in a row. They fall through it. Um, they, they probably have pretty good leaders and probably have guys that, that care about playing. And they don't point fingers. They don't blame. They're not negative. They're positive. We got a positive room in there. Uh, the players are – they're positive. They care. And again, like I said, um, let's we want to we want to start a different streak. You know, let's let's win one and then win another and continue to go and see where it leads. But um, that's kind of the mindset that we have, and there's without a doubt an urgency, and that's okay. Justin seems to have a pretty good connection with Jesse James. Yeah, I mean that kind of started in the preseason, right? Yeah, and it. If it's carried over, I mean, how do you can you tap into that more, either with more of Jesse or other players that he worked with more in the preseason? I think that that's a, a really good point by you. Um, you see that, you feel it. I mean, that throw that he made rolling to his left the first play of the third quarter, Jesse's a big target. He's got long arms, and uh, they do have that connection. They did uh, play together in the preseason. They had a couple throwbacks right early. Um, uh, down the sideline, and so I think that that's natural to have that. And then, but at the same point in time, um, we get a heck of a tight end coming back too. And Jimmy Graham is one of the best to ever do it at that position. So we feel really good at that having those three guys. Um, and and I think, but you also need to build. And and when you have uh, a rapport with a guy, it's important to keep that. And those guys have that, and we'll see where it goes. About who? Oh. He's um, he's a game changer. I mean, he is he's special now. He's all over the place. He's smart. He he can beat you with different moves, um, speed to power. Uh, he can you know bull rush you. He'll he'll be all over the place, different spots on the D line, um, you know, and he goes after the football. He ta when he when he tackles, he tackles the football. Uh, when you're in the pocket, you better have ball security because he's going after that football and. Um, there, you, you look at the Seattle game, right, in overtime. You look at several games throughout the year. But uh, there's a reason why they took care of him. And uh, he's, you know, again, you, you, you talk to guys like Jesse who have been there, James, have been there, and you, you get to feedback on who some of these guys are and how they work. And he's a hard worker that cares. So. Thanks, All right, thank you.